welcome to Hamilton's favorite music show, Underground Sound, where we focus on the wonderful talents strung throughout the Hamilton area. On today's show, we're able to get an inside look at Cat and Fiddle, a British pub located on John Street in Hamilton, and then we'll have an exclusive interview with Baldeep Randawa, a special events programmer for the Mohawk Students Association and head of the programming committee for Sound of Music Festival in Burlington. After that, we'll sit down with Months and Years, a raw punk band native to Hamilton. I'm Trina Corvino, and this is Underground Sound. Established in 1993, Cat and Fiddle is an authentic British pub located on the corner of John and Augusta. The venue features live music five nights a week with acts so talented you won't be disappointed. Chris Patterson recently visited Cat and Fiddle to watch Mississippi Benz perform and to learn a little bit more about the bar. So I'm hanging out with Suzanne Keast inside the Cat and Fiddle. Now Suzanne, you're the owner and manager. How did you get involved? The Cat and Fiddle was opened uh, just over 21 years ago by my father and a partner and I've been involved from the very beginning and it's a uh, family business so this, this is uh, what I've ended up doing. What would you say separates the Cat and Fiddle from other bars in Hamilton? What makes it special? Um, part of it is being a family business. My son also is working here and this is his full-time job, so we're a third generation dealing with it. Um, we have a lot of musicians that work here also uh, to supplement their income and we're just a kind of comfy, cozy place to go. We, well, we have music every, uh, every night of the week except Monday. But, which we have trivia, and then on Wednesday nights we have a jazz jam, which uh, we have four core people that are musicians that are playing, but they um, also, a lot of uh, people will come in who also uh, play jazz, and they'll speak to Clark, who runs it, and if they want to sit in on breaks or uh, times uh, and, and be involved in it, he, he arranges all of that and organizes it. We get a lot of Mohawk students come okay. down. If bands wanted to play here, would they contact you? Yeah, they contact me through, best way is through my email, okay. which is cat and fiddle, so C A T N F I D D L E, at simpatico.ca. All right. Um, is there anything else that you want to say? Um, we have great bands, great music here. Um, musicians that play here love to play here, so please come down and support them. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Suzanne. Thank you. Aside from working here for the past five months, um, I've also been a musician that plays here on Sunday afternoons for the past two years. The customers are great, the food is great, there's a good selection of drafts on tap. The co-workers are fantastic, I love working with everyone that works here. I'm hanging out inside the Cat and Fiddle with Mary Simon, the lead singer of local Hamilton band Mississippi Benz. Alright, so can you first um, tell me how many people are in the band and what they do and introduce them? Um, there's four of us in the band. Uh, Andrew Aldridge is on electric guitar, Carrie Ashworth is on bass, and Robin Pearson is on drums. What kind of music do you guys play? We play Americana Alt Country. Okay. So if you ever listen to Sirius XM Satellite Radio, we'd fall in the Outlaw Country category. Outlaw Country, mm -hmm. that's interesting. So who would you say are some of your musical influences? A uh, big fan of Ryan Adams. Oh, very nice. Um, Listen to Williams, Patty Griffin's my number one. Um, also, Ray LaMontagne. Um, the whole band's influences are all over the map, but for the most part, that sums it up. All right. So, how long have you guys been a band? Um, almost a year. Almost a year. Mm -hmm. Seems like you've done a lot for almost a year. Well, I've been doing it a lot. Okay. And everyone else in the band has been doing it a lot. But okay. as a collective, yeah. On December 6th, we're releasing our first EP, which That's super is exciting. 
Yeah, at the, at the St. Hollywood. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so if people wanted to hear more of your music or catch one of your shows, where could they go? MississippiBenz.com. MississippiBenz.com. All you right. You can that's even fantastic. download a free mm -hmm. song there. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mary. I appreciate it. Thank you. I think I've had a little bit too much fun tonight at the Cat and Fiddle. That being said, I highly suggest if you want to check out some local music, maybe play some trivia on a Monday, that you come down to 174 John Street South. I'm Chris Patterson. This has been Underground Sound. I gotta call myself a cat. Thanks, Chris, and a big thank you to Cat and Fiddle for another great night filled with entertainment. Now that we've seen what it's like for bands to perform in a venue, let's learn more about what it takes to really make it in the music industry and land a gig at the Sound of Music Festival in Burlington. I'd like to welcome Baldeep Randawa to Underground Sound. How's it going? Um, first off, how did you get involved with the Sound of Music Festival? Perfect. So I've been in the music industry for 10 plus years. Um, so actually when I came to Hamilton and uh, started my career here at uh, Mohawk College, uh, we actually, um, uh, one of my friends worked uh, at the festival and asked me to help uh, stage manage and sit on the committee. So I did that for a year, uh, enjoyed it. Uh, they invited me back, invited me to be co-chair of the programming committee. Um, so I helped uh, book for an extra year over there. And then after that, they asked me to become the chair and uh, fully book all the, the programming and uh, manage all the uh, entertainment for the festival itself. So I've been doing uh, booking uh, the entire festival for about three years now. So just kind of fell into it, but love it. So. Such a cool job. Yeah. And how do you feel that the music festival uh, evolves every year? Uh, so we always try to change it in some aspects. So that's that's my thing. I get bored easily. So I'm like, I always wanted to make something new, unique, uh, and also something memorable for uh, for the people that are returning, as well as the new people that are coming to encourage more people to come out. Uh, so we, we're always constantly trying to add something. So being a family festival, uh, we have the ability to program for almost every uh, single type of uh, demographic and genre of music out there. So for instance, last year was one of the first years we tried to uh, uh, introduce uh, hip hop to the festival. So we had one of our most successful nights ever by uh, having um, uh, three artists come play a full hip hop night and uh, we had like 30, 40,000 just out on that stage. Um, and then to like this year, we're, we're um, experimenting doing something like EDM and doing more DJs and all that to another stage, as well as we uh, introduce uh, things uh, such as street performers or uh, various like, um, we're working on a surprise, I can't announce it right now, but for the week before the festival, we're trying to expand it and do something different that we've never done in the history of the 36 years of our festival. Ooh. So uh, we're always trying to introduce new aspects to make it different, more fun, and just bring more and more people out there every single year. So when can when can we expect to hear maybe about that surprise? Uh, in a couple later, months. Later, in a couple later. Of months. Yeah. Okay. And what it, what type of characteristics or what type of qualities do you look for in a band when you're booking the talent for the Sound of Music Festival? Uh, so it depends. So if uh, if I'm looking at the headliners, uh, I'll be looking at something that. Uh, that pulls a wide demographic of people out there. So I'll, I'll try to get someone like new, current, as well as uh, like so, like I'll try to mix it up and add some uh, some old, unique, just singers such as like when we brought in Devo or when we brought in uh, Maestro Fresh West. Some like some some things that cause a little bit of memory. Yeah. Um, actually, one of my favorites was when we brought in like Sharon Lois and Bram and. Uh, Fred Penner, so we like brought back my childhood Such to the festival. Such a throwback, the yeah. Throwbacks. Um, <laughs> so I'm looking for something that's one going to engage, uh, engage the crowd. So uh, having um, like throughout the festival, we have approximately 300, uh, 300 to 400 thousand people show up to the festival. Uh, so for that, I want to make something that someone's going to sing to, someone's going to get uh, attached to, and it's going to create a memory uh, for them later on. Uh, so I'm looking for someone to be a little bit more. Uh, engaging and more of a show, a, like a great live show when you're over there. Um, and for some of the new bands that are starting out, uh, I'm looking for someone who's like, who their, may not, their name may not draw a big crowd, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping that their live performance is going to blow them out of the water, they're going to sell tons of merch, people are going to fall in love with them, so later on um, in a few years when they're bigger, they'll come back. So. Yeah, almost like you're discovering them in a sense. Exactly. That kind of rolls up perfectly to my next question, which was, um, 
how does it feel to be in a position where you're you're giving you, you could be giving a, a new band their chance or their big break, so to speak, to perform at Sound of Music in front of so many people? It's actually my favorite part about booking the festival uh, is it gives me the opportunity because uh, we we do book X amount of uh, headlining bands that people are coming there for, uh, but we have uh, hundreds of slots over there for new developing bands that we get to, to implement. So maybe some of my favorites that I love watching at local bars I get to finally put in front of a big crowd that. Um, and then just for more people to see them. So like, it, it's, it's a great thing because like, even over the past few years, like, uh, I've worked with uh, bands such as like, uh, like Down with Webster mm -hmm. when I booked them um, probably eight years ago before Gene Simmons or anyone heard of them. Uh, they, they opened up at noon for me in just like in, in, a, in a small show and then only three years later they're exploding onto like the mainstream. So it's, it's a good opportunity and it kind of keeps, uh, keeps everything fresh and new and mm. it's, um, it's, just, it's just great to see some of these young bands eventually make it and wash them through the process. Yeah, so. and it must be cool to know that you have kind of, you know, Is you that, have something to do with that too. You yeah. put them on stage. Yeah, and it's all them. I just gave them the <laughs> opportunity to do their thing. Yeah, well, so, absolutely, yeah. right? You open the door. You yeah. open the door. Um, and then lastly, tell us how bands can apply to um, audition, or how does that work? They apply and then do they audition for you as well, and then you select who's uh, picked? Yeah, there's a, there's a large variety. So uh, we have uh, approximately like 300 plus bands uh, that play throughout the weekend at the festivals. So uh, some we select, uh, like the headliners, like I'll work with agents and all that and select mm -hmm. them that way. Uh, for a lot of the opening slots or uh, for um, our new music stages, uh, we, we do a lot on sonic bids. So if you go onto our website, uh, www.soundofmusic.ca, uh, there's a direct link uh, to our sonic bids website, which is, uh, it's a resource where uh, bands can apply, uh, we can listen and uh, check their music, and then I can kind of contact them that way. Uh, like I also do like go check out uh, local venues and see uh, which bands are being talked about. But uh, the easiest way for someone to put themselves directly towards uh, uh, myself and our committee would be applying uh, throughout the f through the festival website. Nice. Right, so a lot of it is online. Yes. But you're also out there checking out the underground sound of Hamilton, right? Definitely. To see if they can come and play. Yeah. That's awesome. We'd like to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be here with us today, Waldeep. Thank you so much. When we come back, we're going to sit down with months and years and learn what it's like to be in a local band that's on the verge of making it big.
Welcome back. We're here with Months and Years a pop-punk band that can be found here in Hamilton. They stormed onto the music scene with their debut album, Cope. Some of my favorite songs on the album include Discord and Hollows. Hey guys, welcome to Underground Sound. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having us. How's it going? Can we have you just introduce yourselves, tell us what you play in the band? Uh, my name is Adam, I'm the vocalist. My name is Dave, I play guitar. My name's Andrew, I play rhythm guitar. I'm Dane and I play bass. And how did you guys meet and form the band? Oh, it's an interesting story, actually. We've been, uh, good buddies for a long time. Um, we always played music in various different projects and, and so on and you know we were just kind of hanging out one day and decided that it would be fun to write some songs together and, and spend some time together so we just started working on it for fun at the start and then um, we ended up recording and got the EP out of it so it's been a really good experience and we're still writing. So. So you, some of you knew each other for a long time before you formed the band? Yeah right? we did actually. I've known him since I was four or five Something probably like that, so yeah. we have cottages next to each other uh, up in yep. Perry Sound and we've been buddies since we were kids and then uh, these guys I met you know throughout high school and afterwards so yeah. were you guys jamming when you were four at the cottage <laughs> no, that's where like, it all like, started yeah, like finger painting and eating pizza pops and stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's okay. a little different back then but we still do that <laughs> and tell us about the theme of the album cope what's the story behind the theme of the album um so basically like uh for me, I really wanted to express a lot of like very personal things with the uh, with the record and the lyric writing process um, because it was a good opportunity for me to just say what I wanted to say and express how I wanted uh, how I felt. And it's a lot to do with um, like the burden of everyday life and like uh, mental health and, and just like like kind of dealing with um, problems that we all kind of face and and different ways and just learning how to like cope and manage with those issues. Oh, nice. And who does most of the songwriting then? Is so it, I write yeah? the majority of the lyrics, and uh, I guess what we we have a everyone comes to the table with ideas kind of thing. Um, and you know, Adam and I will jam on some basic stuff together, or we'll get together and write some guitar parts, and then we come together and uh, get in a jam room for a couple hours and play with our amps and the full drum kit and stuff, and see what comes out of it. We kind of like adding little bits at a time, and then by the time we get to the recording stage, it's it's at a stage level that we want it to be at. So you all contribute in a sense to yeah, the, yeah, the creative yeah, process of it. And is there any uh, any one or couple of songs on the album that are more meaningful to you guys than the others? And if so, why? Um, uh, I think the song is still in time. Uh, stands out for me a lot. Uh, for me, that was one that I <clears throat> like felt was very personal and like very um, expressive of like what I wanted to say. And I feel like I didn't hold back in terms of like lyric writing. I just was okay to like say things that maybe I wouldn't have said in the past that were like very open and, and very honest. So I'm really happy with how that one turned out and that's probably the one I'm most like proud of. I feel like usually the most honest, honestly written songs are, are the better ones on the album because that's what people relate to the most, right? Yeah, yeah, I hope so, yeah. And what was it like working with Anton DeLost and Lost Recording? Oh, uh, Anton's awesome. I mean, I think we all have last. Um, we found him through another friend's band actually and then we, uh, we met up with them and just the whole vibe right off the bat was like pretty much awesome. It was exactly what we were looking for. Um, Anton's a great guy um, and we had a really cool sort of process with, with recording the EP because uh, we let him try some stuff out that maybe he was waiting to try and we were sort of open to any new ideas for the record as well. You'll hear some like weird guitar effects on there for example and we just we had fun with it and kind of tried to get a little bit outside the box with it and uh, he was open to doing that and I think we had a lot of fun doing it too. Nice. And the story behind the name, Months and Years? Um, so we had a different like working name for a while and like we weren't like sure if we were going to go with it or not and then I kind of like, I don't know, kind of just came to me one day and I just thought it would, it would be good to like kind of summarize the idea that we've been friends for like months and years. We've had all these experiences for like months and years together and like for me like lyrically like um, I've been talking about the months and years of my life and like all the things that I've experienced so it's kind of like a collective idea of like us as a whole and like what that <clears throat> kind of means for like our whole band, I guess. There's a lot of different meanings behind it, I guess. Yeah, really cool, really cool. Okay, thank you guys so much for being here with us today. I think it's about time that we spice things up and you can show us how talented you are by performing in our studio. We'll be right back with that.
Nights like these, they pass on slower than the ocean's tide. As my mind sinks and is lost somewhere in the deep abyss, I wish I could take you there, but I know you never want to stay here with me at home under the waves. And I've always felt like a single drop of rain Wanting to make a difference to raise the sea Or to wash away someone else's pain In this pursuit I've neglected my own happiness And my desire to feel even a single drop Wash down over me Notice me Like I still notice you And make me feel for once That I am meaningful And all I want is for one day to Not feel so alone And to have you there to hold me like I still notice you and make me feel for once that I am meaningful and all I want is for one day to not feel so To always stay That was an amazing performance. We'd like to thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to come and play on our show and also for taking the time to interview with me and answer some of our questions. We'd also like to send our thanks to Cat and Fiddle and Mississippi Benz for letting us film their set as well as Baldeep Rindawa for coming in and speaking with us. We'll see you next time on Underground Sound. Thanks for watching. Operations, hallucinations, I'll tell the